Let's talk about the internal structure of classes and of objects. This video is just an introduction. First of all, we're going to talk about class objects, and then we're going to talk about instances of class objects. So, okay, let's ask a fundamental question. What is an object? An object is a runtime entity that contains data and responds to messages. Simple enough. But we have to separate two different kinds of objects. The two different kinds of objects, particularly in Java, are class objects and instances of class objects. So the purpose of this video is to demystify what it means to be a class object and what it means to be an instance of a class object. <clears throat> Once we fully understand the two different concepts, that both are objects and yet they do have differences, we're going to be able to advance quite a bit in our programming in Java. So okay, here's the world of computer memory. Now I'm going to create two class objects. I'm going to create an object named tree and I'm going to create a class object named person. Now tree and person are like templates. They're like blueprints that define what a tree should be and what a person should be. So let's go ahead and let's look and see how I coded tree and how I coded person. Let's create the tree class. Class tree. And in the tree class, we're going to give it some instance variables. So string name. Uh, let's say <coughs> integer number of leaves, uh, a double called height. Let's give it a behavior called grow. And so that would be public double uh, grow. And as a parameter, it takes in a double. <coughs> and it takes in a change in height. So what I would do is I would say this dot height is increased by change in height. So this keyword here <coughs> refers to any instance of the tree class. So if I actually create a tree object by saying this, it will take the height of that tree object and increase its current height by the value of change in height. Now, <clears throat> we're also going to create a constructor, which is a method that runs the moment an object of a class is created. The constructor name has to have exactly the same name as the class itself. And so when I create a tree object, I'm going to pass in a name. I'm going to pass in number of leaves and I'm going to pass in a height and because I'm running out of space I'm going to say H. So I refer to the object which means I'm going to use the this keyword again this.name equals name so name is what I'm passing in so that's what this piece represents what I've passed in but when I say this.name I'm referring to the class object, which is the value up here. And so this is at the moment of creation. So I pass in a name and I put that value into <coughs> this instance variable, which belongs to the class object. This dot number of leaves equals number of leaves. This dot height equals height. And so there's my constructor that I use at the moment of creation. Let's create the person class. Class person. A person should have a name. A person, a person should have an age. A person should have a height. A person should have a weight. 
and a person should be able to do a lot of stuff. Well, this particular person can only do one thing. We're going to let this person talk. So we're going to say, um, let's see here, public um, void talk, and it takes in a string called message. And what it does is it prints the message. And so there's the talk behavior. All right, we need to have some kind of a constructor because when we create a person object, we want to be able to create the object, and that's why we need the constructor. The constructor is what helps create the object. So public person, again, the constructor has to have the same name as the class. And what am I going to pass into it? <clears throat> a string called name, an integer called age. I think I'm going to run out of space, so I'll just say a, and a double called height, and a double called weight. Now, when I refer to the object being created, I use the this keyword, this.name equals name, this.age equals a, because that's what's being passed in. This dot <coughs> height equals h, and this dot weight equals w. And there's my constructor for the person class. All right, now I actually want to create an instance of the tree class. To do this, I create the following line of code. <coughs> tree tree1 equals new tree spruce 9800 5.0. What this does is this creates an instance of the tree class. I now have a spruce. Its number of leaves is 9800 and its height is, we'll say, 5 meters. So while tree is a class object, meaning it's a blueprint, my spruce is the instance of the tree class. And my spruce has three instance variables, name, number of leaves, and height. When you run a Java program, class objects endure throughout the entire program. So once the program is running, class objects never go away. On the other hand, however, instances of classes come and go. So for example, the identifier that points to my spruce is called tree1. But what happens if this link between the identifier and my spruce vanishes? When that happens, when tree1 no longer points to my spruce, we call that dereferencing. So when an instance of an object becomes dereferenced, it loses its identifier. When that happens, Java has a special background program called the garbage collector. The garbage collector walks through computer memory looking for objects that have been dereferenced. Once it finds my spruce, it then deletes my spruce from memory and then continues on its merry way. Okay, now let's create an instance of the person class. Person man1 equals new person Fred 43 5.8 175. And here's Fred. Fred is an instance of the person class. So while the person class endures from the beginning of my program to the end of my program, Fred can come and go. <clears throat> Fred's identifier is man1. So as long as Fred is not dereferenced from man1, he will continue to endure in my program. The moment he becomes dereferenced, the garbage collector will eventually come by and dissolve him and remove him from computer memory. Fred has four instance variables, name, age, height, and weight. And if you remember from the program that I showed you, Fred also has a behavior, which is talk. We just don't see the behavior in the listing here, but he does have a behavior. So this is the main idea. This is the difference between what it means to be a class object 
and what it means to be an instance of a class object. Both are objects. Both are objects. This is important, particularly when we want to start talking about the static keyword, which we're not going to do in this lesson. But once we get a, a handle on this concept, the difference between class objects and instances of class objects, then the static keyword is going to make way more sense. God bless you, wherever you are today.